Uh, welcome. I'm Professor Martin Ning uh, of Macquarie University Hospital and Royal Prince Alfred Hospital. I'd like to thank Structural Heart Disease Australia for asking us to participate in the Interdisciplinary Mitral Valve Day. Uh, today we'll be taking you through a case of transcatheter mitral valve repair. There has been incredible interest in edge-to-edge uh, -edge mitral valve repair, both for the treatment of functional mitral incompetence and also for the treatment of high-risk degenerative mitral valve incompetence. Uh, there's been growing interest in the therapeutic application of this technology. As this technology is often applied to patients who are elderly or have significant comorbidities, uh, the current consensus is that they are best served uh, by being considered in an interdisciplinary structural heart team. So as part of our journey today, we'll be taking you through a heart team discussion of an elderly patient with predominantly degenerative mitral incompetence, but also a component of functional mitral incompetence. And also we'll be taking you through a, a mitral clip procedure and taking you through step-by-step step the procedure, as well as the key echocardiographic views that guide success in transcatheter mitral valve repair. I hope you enjoy the broadcast. So the first case today is uh, of Mr. C.O. <clears throat> He's a 92-year-old retired anesthetist who lives at home with his daughter and grandson. He's independent with his self-caring activities of daily living, and he mobilizes with a walking stick. His background medical history includes the following, atrial fibrillation and warfarin, a hyperlipidemia, spinal canal stenosis with the previous cervical fusion, lumbar laminectomy, transurethral resection of prostate in 2014, and his ex-smoker quit in 2010. He describes a 12 to 18 month history of progressively worsening exertional dyspnea and two pillow orthopnea. And his echo showed severe mitral regurgitation. He proceeded to have a pre-valve coronary angiogram and transesophageal echocardiogram as well. But really this patient does not have any hemodynamically significant uh, epicardial coronary stenosis. So we can move on to the echo here. So this is the transesophageal echo, the four chamber view. We can see the left ventricular systolic function looks normal. Right ventricle is a bit dilated, but with normal contraction. This is the color image. We can see that there's significant mitral regurgitation, which is arising centrally and slightly posteriorly directed in that four chamber view. And what we've done here is to use x pain straight through A2P2. This shows us the a2 portion in the right hand panel of the mitral leaflet and this is P2 and you can see the mitral leaflets are thickened. There's a little bit of prolapse particularly of the anterior leaflet and if we look at the next image that correlates with the origin of the jet so we can see that that jet is in the central portion A2 P2. So this is confirmed on the 3D image. So with the 3D image, we're looking, I'll just I'll just, just point out to you, this is the anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet, and this is aortic valve at the top. This is the lateral side. So if we just get this to run, we can see that the valve is thickened and it looks like there's a central coaptation defect, and that's confirmed on the next image, which shows the color. And so we can see that there's a central origin color jet. So this is A2P2 um, central origin jet, which is related to predominantly degenerative change of the valve and some degree of prolapse in, in, in a ventricle that's of normal function. We also know that he's got um, tricuspid regurgitation, but, um, which is significant, but the intention is to deal with the mitral regurgitation first. So, so Lisa, did you calculate a mitral valve area in uh, Dr. Wolf? So, so the plenimeter valve area was more than six. Okay. So adequate for for a clip, and um, and the mean gradient was not significant. So one millimeter mercury, the mitral yeah. mean gradient. The consensus here is that this patient has uh, clinically significant mitral regurgitation, uh, which uh, is treatable by percutaneous mitral valve repair with an edge-to-edge -edge repair device, uh, either a mitral clip or a, an Ed Edwards Pascal implant. Uh, he has, his MR is also surgically addressable, but this is less desirable in his case due to advanced age. I, I would say that he's on optimal guideline-directed medical therapy, but still having kind of NYHA class uh, 
two, three symptomology. This is a good discussion. I think we've got, we have a procedural plan that includes a, a planning for a difficult intubation. And our recommendation is for um, transcatheter mitral valve repair. If you look at this image, the principal cause of the annular dilatation is from gross left atrial dilatation. Uh, and actually the ventricle itself is not particularly dilated. And so you have atrially, you know, a, an atrially mediated annular dilatation in combination with a bit of anterior leaflet prolapse. Um, and, you, and you can see that in the context of the atrial, atrially mediated annular dilatation, there's a shift in the mitral coaptation point slightly towards the atrium. This is distinct to ventricular functional mitral regurgitation where the mitral coaptation point is often shifted towards the ventricle because of tethering of the leaflets. This pathology really means that because of the, so the slight atrial shifting of the, the, the mitral leaflet coaptation point, we are aiming to have a reasonable height with our transeptal puncture today, aiming for between four to five centimeters. Now, Lisa, do you want to show us the origin of the jet, where, where it is in the mitral anatomy? So just to make the point that the MR often looks less during the procedure because of anesthetic, but you can still see there's a significant jet area. Um, and as I turn through, uh, this is now a connoisseural view, and A2P2 is in the center. So this is A2P2, and you can see this is a broad origin jet. The jet actually measures 11 millimeters, which means that probably a single clip will be sufficient. This is the most useful view. So this is an x fan view from a commissural position. And this shows me A2 and B2. And A2 here is prolapsing. So you can see that it's prolapsing compared to B2. And B2 length measures 12 millimeters, which is important in terms of choosing which clip to use. And you can see that at this point is where we've got the biggest jet, which is the which which is this A two P two jet. The mitral valve leaflets are slightly thickened, as well as prolapsing. And I'll just show, so I'll just show you when we go to the three D. This shows that the leaflets are that thickened and under the degenerative change in the valve. So it'd be hard to show with my pointer, but the this is the anterior leaflet, and this is the posterior leaflet. This is the A2 portion and P2 portion. This is aorta just to orientate to you, and this is left after the appendage. So the jet origin is central, like to A2 and P2. And I'll unfreeze, and you can see that there's a, perhaps a little cartation defect there. And in the color image, you can see that the jet origin is, is centrally. Because the, the, the width of the jet is, satis, is satisfactory likely for a single prosthesis, our current plan is to apply a single mitral clip between the A2 and P2 scallops of the mitral valve. And I think that, you know, given that the posterior leaflet length is adequate, we would favor using a mitral clip XTR device here um, to get better uh, to, to get better edge to edge uh, kind of uh, co-optation of the leaflets. So that's that's our current procedural plan. The steps of the, the mitral clip procedure or percutaneous edge-to-edge -edge mitral valve repair involve firstly a transeptal puncture. The second step will be for us then to introduce a steerable guiding catheter. And after that, we will introduce the clip delivery system. The clip delivery system contains the mitral clip and that will be introduced through the steerable guide into the left atrium. Once we have the clip delivery system within the left atrium, we will then conduct the procedure of edge-to-edge -edge repair with the mitral clip. So these are the, the key steps to deploying the mitral clip. Once the mitral clip device is in, uh, we will then check and verify uh, the adequacy of the grasp and review whether any additional devices are necessary. Okay, Lisa, so uh, we're gonna. You, maybe you should show a bicable view. So we're about to conduct a transeptal puncture, um, and basically the transeptal puncture uses uh, for, for mitral clip uh, is is used typically transesophageal echo guided, and the key views in, include the bicable view, a shorter to determine the height along the interatrial septum, 
a short axis of the base view to determine anterior and posterior orientation, and also a four chamber view uh, to look at uh, the height above the mitral valve. I think this is pretty good. So I'm gonna just concentrate on that view. We're gonna try and puncture here. I think we're across. So we are, the needle's across. We're introducing the, so we're across the interatrial septum. You can see that they're both on ultrasound and X-ray. And so now we're introducing the SL0 sheath over the dilator and the needle. Can we fully anticoagulate? So that's on the X-ray there, showing the wire into the pulmonary vein from the SL0 sheath. Uh, this is the wire on which the, the uh, steerable guiding catheter, the mitre clip, uh, will be introduced. So we're introducing now a second wire, having introduced an amplat super stiff wire for the clip delivery system, for the uh, steerable guide. So this second wire will be also in the left atrium. This allows us to introduce a five French pigtail catheter into the left atrium. The reason for this catheter is to allow us to monitor left atrial pressures during the mitre clip procedure. Currently, this, this Gen 3 mitre clip system does not allow for monitoring left atrial pressures during the procedure. So this, this system here is the steerable guiding catheter. This, this al allows the mitre clip system to be introduced from the femoral vein into the left atrium. So essentially, in essence, it is a sheath. The sheath has a, a, an, a dial in it here that allows flexion of the tip, which you can see here. So, so for introduction, we actually deflex the tip to make it fairly straight so that it can actually go in from the skin down into the femoral vein. And then as we come towards the heart to cross the interatrial septum, we, we go back to its normal flexion. So we're gonna now introduce this from the femoral vein up into the heart itself. This, this is the direct left atrial pressure through the SL0 sheath. You can see that the mean is 17, which isn't particularly high, but you can see that the, 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 the this patient's currently in sinus rhythm, therefore there's A waves and V waves, but you can see the dominance of the V wave with the A wave being around 18 and the V wave being 28. The dominance of the V wave in this left atrial pressure trace is consistent with the patient having significant mitral regurgitation. So I forgot to mention that after the transeptal puncture, we, we administered full anticoagulation. Dr. David De Silva has checked the ACT and is currently over 300. We're now threading the clip delivery, the, the steerable guide so that we can introduce the steerable guide into the left side of the heart. This here is the mitre clip prosthesis itself. The, the clip comprises a uh, grippers and the clips. So the grippers come down and then we, we, we capture the, the leaflets between these two structures on these two arms here. And this clip is attached to this catheter system. This is called the clip delivery system. It has a, a series of dials that allow us to maneuver uh, the mitre clip in multiple directions. So, so this is the next step, which is the introduction of the mitre clip with the clip delivery system into the steerable guiding catheter. So the clip is emerging. We, we need to be, have a close visualization of the clip here so that we, 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 we can introduce it safely without, without hitting the left atrial wall. So, so I'm gonna come back with the, with the uh, steerable guide so that we have some room. So now what we wanna do is we wanna try and work on bringing the mitre clip system down to the, to the mitral valve. So it looks like I'm oriented very posterior. So I've centralized there by moving anterior. So we've got an X-plane view there on the, on, the, on the transesophageal echo with a sort of intercommissural view on the left and a left ventricular outflow tract view on the right. So Lisa, looking at that, it looks like maybe we're, we're a bit too medial. So I might, I might take some, uh, a little bit of M off the system, right? Uh, M is the medial flexion knob of the device. Um, and I might sort of introduce, I, I might just bring the whole system forward. So now it looks a little bit more central. You can see now nicely that the clip is sitting above the mitral valve leaflets on those transesophageal echo views. And the idea here is to position the clip uh, to split the, 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 the color of the jet. So, uh, so Lisa, lo looking at the intercommissural view, we look like we're pretty close to splitting the jet. Maybe medial, yes, so I'm moving the system back medially. I think that looks okay now. 
So what I'm going to do now is we're going to open the clip and we're going to look at orientation. So the, the, the guiding of the mitre clip is principally by transesophageal echo and it, it, and it critically uses both 3D and two-dimensional toe uh, combined with x-ray. And we're going to open the arms. So this is to allow us to determine clip orientation. Um, so Lisa, do you want to go to 3D on fast? So, so 3D is important in looking at uh, the clip position as well as orientation of the clip arms. So we ideally at the point of grasp, uh, we want the clip to be orientated perpendicular uh, to the mitral uh, valve coaptation. So you can see that that's a 3D on fast view. The aorta is at uh, sort of 12 o'clock. Uh, we'll, we'll try and go into the ventricle here, right? So if you stay in that view, we'll, we'll cross the valve. So if we look on the x-ray, we look exactly side on to the clip, which means that we probably have not rotated that much. And there's a slight aorta hugger slant on the LVOT view. Going from um, anterior to posterior doesn't help me. So I'm going to put some plus knob on. So, so we're just correcting the trajectory of, of the of the mitre clip. I think rotation is pretty good. Oh, we're quite central there. And our orientation, our, our sort of trajectory is a bit better. Now the anterior is back on. I think the posterior is almost to the apex of the device. Okay, ready? Record now. Uh, okay, lower grippers, please, Michael. So we're going to close the, the arms a little bit. So now we, you can see the closing of the mitre clip arms. And you can see they're live on the left atrial pressure trace, that orange pressure trace. The, the V wave is coming down. So there's a relative reduction in the V wave with the capped grasp. Assessment of mitral regurgitation after clip implantation. Often you bisect the jet, causing two separate jets at the point of grasp. And this actually can increase the amount, the total area, the color. Uh, and that's an iatrogenic effect of grasping the leaflets and bisecting the jet. But this does not necessarily mean that the MR has gotten worse. It does affect the, the color assessment of the MR. That's why we look at other objective methods like left atrial pressure measurement and we can see there that there was a clear reduction in the left atrial V wave. There are other surrogates here like the increase in spontaneous echo contrast uh, in the left atrium consistent against with reduction in mitral regurgitation and therefore reduction in flow uh, within the left atrium. Dr. Simmons there is just measuring the transmitral gradient which is one millimeter. We, we don't expect any change here in the transmitral gradient with the deployment of a single mitral clip device. So Dave, uh, have you given something for the blood pressure? Because I, I noticed that syst his systolic was sort of mid hundreds. No, it's and now it's 133. It's yeah. got, has it gone up after grasp? Yeah. So this is another interesting thing. So with, with the reduction in the MR, we've now experienced a significant increase in the systolic blood pressure. So it started around 105 millimeters mercury. Now it's 134. Uh, millimeters mercury and so it suggests that there has been possibly an improvement in cardiac output with reduction in the MR. This is a 3D on fast post uh, deployment of a single mitral clip XTR prosthesis. You can see here that the device is spanning the A2 and P2 scallops of the mitral valve. So we see what we expect when you put a clip across the A2 and P2 scallops which is the creation of a dual orifice mitral valve. So there's two orifices on either side of the, the, the mitral clip. On the LVOT view, there's a, there looks like there's a good grasp of both the anterior and the posterior leaflet. The clip has been delivered at the side of maximal MR. It appears perpendicular to a line of coaptation. And really, the rigid, we have objective evidence of MR reduction with reduction in left atrial V wave, the increase in left atrial spontaneous echo contrast, as well as significant reduction in MR color. We're happy to deploy here. And actually, we, I think that this hemodynamic result is a good one for this patient. So the next step here is we, we are gonna, we're going to actually therefore uh, deploy this clip. The device is now separated from the, from the mitral clip. 
So the mitre clip is now fully released. And this is associated with increased movement, actually, in this case of the device because of the anterior leaflet prolapse. I think it's more rocking than we normally expect. Let's have a look at our, our device there. So despite, despite the movement on the X-ray, uh, the, the, the XTR, the mitre clip XTR is securely on the anterior and posterior leaflets. And really, there's very little residual MR. We're happy with this final result. I don't think there's indication to put another mitre clip in. So we've deployed a single mitre clip XTR prosthesis between the A2 and the P2 skull to the mitral valve, slightly medial. Uh, to the center line, uh, but at the side of maximum anterior leaflet prolapse. In this patient that has a mixed anatomy of uh, atrial functional mitral regurgitation and uh, anterior leaflet prolapse. So we're going to pull the mitral clip uh, catheter system, entire system out now, and Dr. Wilson is going to close the groin for me. We have a single per close proglide at the groin pre deployed for pre closure. Thank you. So we're all done.